Daily Loom friends, welcome to Bramble On, Dimension Q's premier source for intelligent conversation, illumination, and erudition as pertained to love among the brambles, the runaway hit of television that's been running nigh on 1,769 seasons. I'm joined today by our producer, Molly. Those in the industry recognize her name as the producer for all of the shows hosted on this channel. They include Bramble On, Station AOAS Omnicasts for the Academy of Omnisophical Arts and Sciences, as well as a podcast by plenipotentiary and chronicler J.S.D. Johnston. Molly is now sleeping, as I might be during this this show today, we are both exhausted after a full week of sleeplessness due to the fallout from last week's episode, Epiphany's Eve, in which we were promised a scene, or two, or more, showing us the party shown for Dahlia, Slate's dalliance, so to speak, dalliance turned wife, when the entire fairy ring was to meet her, and apparently did. However, we were not made privy to those scenes, and the fans have been vocal, vociferous about their reactions, their dissatisfaction. Let's get right to it. In this episode, 1591, The Hidden Pearl, Viola gives the potion to the Fawn Witch. The Fawn Witch then vows to make Prince Raffia's family pay for what was done to her. She then dashes out of the apothecary into the night, presumably to be transformed. Viola tells Calla Lily about the fawn which has vowed to destroy all in Raffia's family. That would include Carter, the quarter, who has been courting Calla Lily. That would include him as well. Calla Lily is absolutely distraught, not only to think that she used Carter to get the lock of his hair because it is the same strain as the family of Raffia and uh, Carter's mother, to be precise, is the person who first cursed the Fawn Witch. And thus, the Fawn Witch will include Carter in her revenge. And now, Callie Lily feels she is not only responsible for using Carter, but now she may be responsible for wiping out his entire family. This realization makes her become ill, and she takes a leave of absence from her work as an empath at Ivy Glen Spa. On a more comedic note, Slate attempts to convert his bachelor flat into a respectable home for three, as we recall. That includes his wife and her mother, the mother for whom Slate is hot, thereby leaving Brooke with nowhere to live. Prince Raffia, still very much alive, I might add, aware that Mayor Hollow has hired Citron as his image consultant, attempts to hire her away. When she asks him what he's offering, he simply says, Whatever you want, it's yours. My, my, my. Dodd Hoskins, the actor now back, it seems, on an ongoing basis from his foray into films, Dodd Hoskins, the human, goes to Milliam's home to tell him what he saw, referring to the party for Dahlia. You can imagine how well this went over with viewers. Dodd Hoskins, a human, is privy to what goes on at a fay gathering, inviting a new person into the ring, which never happens. But meanwhile, the viewers, fans for centuries, are left out. I, I fear the repercussions. I fear for the relationship between the human and Fae. It may be severely affected by this episode. So we have Dodd at Milliam's home. Now remember, Milliam's home had been blown up when he had a batch of never clear starshine, uh, presumably a candle got too close to it, and the whole place went up. Well, he has been rebuilding for, is it two weeks now, when Dodd comes over. But as we know, Pearl, Nanny, Nettlebottom, is now married to Milliam, having been sweethearts when they were young. And with the building going on, many rooms lack walls. 
So when Milliam attempts to hide Pearl, his wife, it is with comedic results, and Dot walks round the house uh, to get a look at how the repairs are going, and Nanny dodges him at every step right before being caught each time. That levity was definitely needed. Uh, let's see. Oh, ousted from his home with Slate, Brooke shows up on the doorstep of Stock, seeking sanctuary. You see, he is unaware that Rosie, the Katie Diddleleaf, has taken up residence there with Stock. Will Stock leave Brooke stranded on the doorstep? Will he invite him in? Will he offer him tea? We're going to have to wait till next week to find out what becomes of these two and Rosie Katie Diddleleaf. And last, uh, wanting to look young and virile like Prince Raffia, smooth-headed, that is to say bald, Maya Hollow gets hair plugs with outlandish results. Well, there you have it. Again, we have no sponsor. With the Fuhrer currently surrounding LATB, since our content centers on the show, no companies will touch us with a 10-foot pole cat at present. The rating for this episode is a full three mushrooms. Dare I say, if we had not had these circumstances with the, the Dahlia situation with the party, I do believe we would have gotten four and a flower, maybe even five full mushrooms. As always, we will take three calls to hear your thoughts on today's episode. Caller one, what have you to say? All right. What is Raffia up to? I mean, yes. Citron is probably very good at being an image consultant, but I don't believe for a minute Raffia doesn't have an ulterior motive. He always has some sort of trick up his fancy embroidered silk sleeve. I bet it's a doozy, too. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Uh, Kola, I am torn on this plot point. Raffia is as slippery as they come, to be sure. And every time I think I know exactly what his next move will be, I'm either wrong or I'm correct. And yet he has another move that puts the previous one to shame. The only saving grace here, however, is that Citron is nobody's fool. She's well-versed in societal media. She's bright. She's worldly. If anyone can match up to Raffia's plotting, well, Actually, Magnolia is the one who plots and schemes. But I, I do think Citron can hold her own. It just really depends how nefarious Raffia's plans are. Let's go to caller number two, shall we? I love, love, love all the comedy this week. Between Slate trying to hang Dahlia's frilly curtains in his masculine house to the mayor's horrible hair plugs, and, of course, the madcap scene with Milliam trying to keep Pearl hidden from Dodd Hoskins as Dodd walked around the house to see how the repairs were growing. All of it added up to one of the best episodes in eons. I hope they can keep this momentum going. Bye-bye. I could not agree more, Carla. The comedic elements of this episode were sorely needed. Now, it is interesting that this episode comes at a time that we are so desperately in need of an uplift. I say it's interesting in so much as when the writers wrote the entire season, they had no idea that we would express such an uproar, we collectively, over the absence of the scene involving Dahlia's party. At least I don't think they knew that, or perhaps was it a publicity stunt? Either way, they have come to their own rescue, the writers, by providing us with these three impeccably staged and acted scenes. Nanny Nettlebottom, that actress, deserves all kudos and girdens for her performance. And at her age, what is she, 134 or so now? Oh, absolute genius. Thank you for that uplifting call we all needed to be reminded of, of the humor in the episode. And now, caller number three. I'm just waiting for the scenes from Dahlia's welcome party. We will still get to see an episode that shows those scenes, right? 
collar. Uh, dare I suggest not to hold one's breath? I would hate to have you be as disappointed as those who had been barraging our studio with phone calls, communiques, visits in person at all hours. Again, our producer and myself, we have had no sleep for days on end. And so I would suggest you look for the good in this episode. As the previous caller mentioned, there were some particularly wonderfully crafted, wonderfully performed scenes and and we are in this for the long haul. They, they cannot have a five mushroom episode every outing. There will be the odd flower, one flower only episode. However, there was a lot of good in this one. We do hope to re-engage sponsors so that we are able to afford to stay on the airwaves. These shows, as you know, are not produced without substantial investment. Tune in next, Plulum, for episode 15922, A Slippery Slope, when Viola asks, What have I done? Lena and Dahlia break out the classifieds, and Nanny gives Dodd the slip and suffers as a result. For now, we will bid you bend your Everyone, do keep calm. To the best of your ability, bramble on. And we look forward to engaging with you again next plulum. Cheriste son. <laughs>